Welcome to Salt Lake City and Project Quicksilver. Full steam ahead. Welcome to Data Center Pulse. Today's episode is eBay's modular data center RFP, codenamed Project Quicksilver. And I'm very pleased to announce that we have selected the winner. That is AHA Consulting Engineers and Winter Street Architects as a team. They will be building our data center here in Salt Lake City. And by the way, it is seven Fahrenheit outside. But who I have with me is? Mark Mesh, Winter Street Architects, Principal Architect. Uh, Colin O'Flynn, uh, AHA Consulting Engineers Partner and Lead Electrical Mechanical Engineer. And I'm Mike Lewis, I'm Director of Mission Critical Engineering for eBay. So we put this RFP out a few months ago and it's been a very interesting process and I'd like Mike to just give us a recap of what uh, has happened. Sure, if you remember we sent the RFP out uh, open to anybody that had the ability to design data centers. We actually sent the RFP out to about 68 different firms and out of those 68 we had about 20 that actually responded to that. Uh, we went through the process of objectively ranking each one of those mm -hmm. uh, responses and we came up with the top five uh, responses that we brought out to San Jose, had them present their designs to us. Uh, after they had done that, we went through and evaluated all the designs for, for the different things that we were looking for, flexibility, modularity, scalability, um, and, 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 and then we're able to uh, choose the winner based on uh, those presentations. And I want to recap as well the value of this RFP process. It's been extremely valuable for two reasons. First, from an eBay perspective, we have uh, a platform to go out and find the best in the industry. And we had really cool designs come in. The second one is that uh, we're able to provide that back to the industry. So the, the folks that actually participated in this uh, have gotten some exposure and the top finalists are actually going to be able to present to my peer community uh, how they approach the problem. But today's episode is focused on what the design was and, of course, what we're going to do with it here. Now, um, why don't you guys talk a little bit about uh, your companies? So what, the, what roles do you guys play in there around Quicksilver? Well, this time around, we, this was a design competition, and uh, our primary leaders on the team is Winter Street Architects, which is Mark Mesh mm -hmm. and, uh, and his group, and, uh, and AHA Consulting Engineers. And we've been designing the data centers together for 15 years. And, and, and I'm going to stop you there for a second because you guys don't look familiar, but you are familiar. <laughs> yes, yes. We were part of the, uh, of the successful team from Project Mercury, and the team has changed a little bit. Last time around, it was a design build, and our leader, EDI, was, was the build leader, and we were the d design team. This time around, it is a, a design bid build competition, mm -hmm. and where it is uh, Winter Street and AHA are the partners leading the team. We have KSI structural engineers, uh, who are our structural engineers who we partner with well. We have SOMAS, who are a local site civil engineer, and actually EDI are also part of the team as, as technology consultants also. And, and I want to make sure that people are really clear. Just like last time, um, the previous history of the companies that were participating in this RFP process didn't matter. They had to stand on their own merits with their design against their actual peers in the industry. Their proposal was everything that we considered. So that was their ability to answer everything in the RFP, and then their design, and then also could the team actually build and deliver it, right? The design itself. So Mike, you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. We really, we really were looking for the answers to our RFPs, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this, in this case, we had a, a, an open, clean slate we started with where we had a blank field and gave the designers a number of options on how to solve our problem. Yeah. So we were so the, the space planning of how do you mix the white floor space with how do you mix the infrastructure with and where do you put the containers was really very important and played a, a large role in how we chose the design. Mm -hmm. Also also being able to be flexible and handle both the power distribution and as far as low dense solutions, moving to high dense solutions and how, how you're able to do that as least intrusively as possible while still maintaining operations, flexibility in the cooling designs and also the efficiency in the cooling designs, uh, year round free cooling here in Utah was a, was a very achievable goal. Uh, and then also the, the ability to scale past um, the, initial, the initial installation and being able to grow with us as a business. And um, I'm always interested in, in what your take was. So, Mark, why don't you guys, uh, you know, kind of spell out what was different about this one 
because you've been involved with two now, right? And you knew you had to start from zero in this, your response. Well, this time, um, well, they're both really, I, I believe, credible competitions and, uh, and, and the, the rewards out there, so it's worth fighting for. Um, for the second time around, we first, there was a point in time where we just weren't sure we were going to go for it because we were wondering if eBay could actually select us twice in a row. Um, that didn't last very long and, and we went for it and, <laughs> and here we are today. Um, but the process, uh, it picks a lot of investment. You really have to roll up your sleeves and, and deliver a design, a proposal. Um, I think we had a simultaneous advantage and disadvantage. We part one of our organizing principles was the notion of flexibility and, and really understanding and defining what that means to eBay, and, mm -hmm. and so we have a little bit more insight. But we also had to outdo ourselves. Um, wasn't going to be good enough. Mm -hmm. um, plus, I think our competition stepped up this time. Yeah, and Mike, why don't you talk about that? Because our our review of those proposals. It was a, that was a lot of work and it was very difficult. Right, and that's one thing that we really noticed was the level of uh, design intent and the, the quality of the submissions was a lot higher than, than with the first one. Mm -hmm. So it made the competition a lot, a lot tougher on our part and it was a lot harder to judge uh, the overall, uh, all the submissions that we got. Yeah, and, and I can tell you personally that we, uh, we'd sat down when all five of them had, pre had presented and the top five were, were really good. Um, they, were, they were evenly matched. I mean, they were large and small companies. But the innovations and also the experience was right there. So, um, you know, when you look at your team compared to some other folks that had come in there, uh, they had built modular data centers. They had uh, other experience in it. But it came down to the thoroughness of the response, okay, as far as meeting all of our requirements in it the creativity in the design that gave us the flexibility, right, and ultimate efficiency. And then, of course, the ability for that team to execute on this design, right? So experience and everything also added up. So we had a very comprehensive way to go score, just like last time. But one thing that was a bit different here is we had a fixed box last time. There was a, a shell in which they were going to incorporate. There was a shell of space for the actual mechanical electrical side, right? Then this one was Here's 15 acres. What would you do with 15 acres with, to augment our current design? So uh, what, what was your take on that as far as how you approached it? Well, um, we just started by searching for some good organizing principles, and, and flexibility is definitely one of them. Um, we learned some lessons at Phoenix that, you know, with the concentration of power and the associated concentration of cooling, mm -hmm. um, you have to shift your priorities like an uh, office building you design for people, right. right? So there, the priority here, and maybe even in like Topaz, the priority is the white space. Um, what we decided was to give infrastructure the number one priority. That's the Can first def thing. Define infrastructure. Um, power, cooling, all yeah. those y utilities and... and mm -hmm. Um, and the distribution of that power and cooling to be able to get to the load as efficiently as, and as flexibly and as scalably as possible. Mm -hmm. And also to have that load available anywhere on site that you wanted to, to apply it, whether it's white space, low density, high density, mm -hmm. or containers in the yard. And that's, that's an important point because we basically said we want to put anything anywhere and we want to be able to quadruple the density over its lifetime. Right. Four or five tech refreshes. Right. Being able to get the flexibility and the modularity, we've all been working with that for years, being able to get that in a load anywhere you want on site, that was one of our biggest challenges. And with that, a shutdown, rapid deploy, all those things. Right. So concurrently maintainable to tier two. At the same time, how do we go back and, and address the IT load? This is very different at, at eBay than the, I think a lot of other companies out there. We're focused on the compute equipment. We're focused on the actual productivity of that compute equipment. And now we've been able to tie with Project Mercury the actual compute load and the optimum environment and the data center and the flexibility. Once you have those together, that's the ultimate efficiency we're getting. We've created the supply chain now. We've created a, a standard SKU process that allows us to rapidly deploy standard equipment inside of our data centers and double the density and quadruple or more the productivity of those racks every time we do a tech refresh. Now when you tie those two together, that's where your challenge comes in. How do you put any of that anywhere, power, cool it, and allow it to change? So You just have to wait. Well, you already know. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, so and, and I want to talk a little bit more about the lessons learned too. So Mike, tell me, tell me uh, in Project Mercury, right, just the last month, I mean, it's been a flurry 
<laughs> right. of things that we, we now believe that we're going to apply to this project. Right. So, so some of the lessons learned, uh, definitely we, we compressed our schedule for Project Mercury, and that caused problems along the way. For instance, we weren't able to factory witness test equipment. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that, 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 that's hurt us in the commissioning phase where we've had to go back and, and, and retest things because, Spend we, more weren't, time. Yeah. because we weren't able to, to test it correctly in the first time because our schedule was, was compressed. You know, those are things that we've looked at mm -hmm. um, for, for this. Uh, and, and just a number of other lessons learned that, that, that things that we would do differently this time as yeah. opposed to what we did in Mercury. And we won't go into all the details, of course, but, uh, you know, for me, there's a couple main points. You know, how the yard is put together, how do we deliver cooling? Specifically, how do we scale that cooling? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, now when you look at a greenfield site, planning for what we were talking with Conliff, you know, how do you put anything anywhere? Is, is critical to us. And so how do we get free cooling year round? We learned a ton in Phoenix. We achieved it, but now how would you tune it further? And that's what I'm really looking forward to in Quicksilver, is what are we gonna do next at scale to what we did in Phoenix? Excellent. Because there's going to be plenty of similarities between the design that we did in Mercury and what we're doing now, but it's not going to be the same design. Yeah. So how do we take those lessons and, and, and make a better facility here? And right. there's going to be improved interrelationships between all the systems based on what we learned in Phoenix, too. Yeah. Yep. And, and these guys live on the East Coast, but we don't hold it against them. So, <laughs> uh, I, I, Mike, can you tell me about the schedule? Because we've now expanded it a little bit, but it's still based on what we published. Sure. So... Tomorrow we start the design meetings. Um, the goal is to be under construction by Q2 of next year and then to have the facility complete and commissioned by December of 2012. Yep, December 21st. Sounds familiar. <laughs> okay, great. Well, I do want to say, um, first off, to everyone who participated in this project, thank you very much. Um, it was a very healthy competition. And all five of the finalists should be very proud of what they actually put in. And being able to present that back to my peers, like we said, there's, there's not a single answer to every problem. This is the answer that made sense to us right now based on our scoring. But the rest of the, the, the solutions themselves, very, very viable. And I know that there's going to be a lot of interest in the industry and in how they approach that problem. So, guys, thank you very much for all the work you put into this. Are you ready for a whole lot of fun? We're, We're ready. ready. <laughs> right on. <laughs> so I did fist bump. Thank you for watching Data Center Pulse, and stay tuned for additional updates on Project Quicksilver.